So what is up guys? We have one this is gonna be the last prediction video and then we're just gonna wait on G era cards and start reviewing G era when the time comes and we know what's coming. So this is it guys, this is everything, this is the last of the last, this is it. This is everything Legion. We're going over everything, it comes, it comes, it gets extended to the next set, it gets extended to the next set. So without further ado, let's get to discussing. Obviously we're gonna discuss cards that we didn't talk about, we already talked about spikes way back in the day. Talked about some Neo Nectar stuff and all that. So if you don't see them again, don't worry. Just go watch the old videos to see it. But right now we're going to show you what's left of Legion. If it comes or not, that's up to Game Studios. So let's get started. There is one more Bermuda Triangle Legion, and it's for Ribieri, actually. Troas. Uh, its effect is Carablast 3 and choose three cards from your hand and discard them. At the end of the battle that this unit attack the Vanguard, if this unit is Legion, you may pay the cost. If you do, stand all of your Vanguard's. So, pretty much, uh, Bermuda Triangle gets a restand by pitching three cards. I'm pretty sure it'd be uh, pitch two, let's pitch pitch three, and then draw two, like it used to be. Like, technically, if this card was to come, it maybe be like an old Dauntless, where it's pitch three, draw two. Uh, or it just gets the pitch two, draw two, and then it's pretty much you have a Dauntless Legion for Bermuda Triangle. And when this unit rides a card named Riviera, search your deck for up to one tie Riviera, Riviera, reveal to your opponent, put it to your hand. So you can search out the G3 too, and the whole point is you can Persona Blast actually with this effect, so you can make the back row stronger if needed. But the whole point is you can re... Well, actually, this is good because, I mean, it's not good because of it only affects... So if your opponent has one intercept and you have the Riviere Persona Blast, you can hit over magic numbers, etc., and play, you know, the game. So we'll see this in the future, maybe, maybe not, but this is the last Legion from being a Triangle. Very interesting that it was a restander, no less. This would be great now, especially with the BT cards we we saw today. So, yeah. A couple more Metal Borg cards will be coming. Metal Borg, Jet Cider. What he does is Soul Blast 1. When this unit is placed, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at the top four cards of your deck. Search up to one Legion ability. Reveal to your foe. So, this works with any Legion in DP. So, True, Zeal, anything. You don't need to be Metal Borg name related, it's just Soul Blast 1. So you build up your drop early and you're searching out your Legion. Hold up, that did not load correctly. So like I said, this is Metal Borg, um, Jet Slider. So with that being said, okay. So this is Metal Borg Jet Slider, sorry about that. So pretty much what I said, it's Soul Blast 1 when this unit, when you place on the rear guard, you Soul Blast 1. Then you can search out a Legion. If not, then nothing happens. Next is Metal, Metal Borg Black, Blacking Barrow. If your Vanguard is a Metal Borg, this card becomes an 11k. Counter Blast 1. When your Vanguard with Metal Borg and his card name attacks, you may pay the cost of you do. Choose one of your Vanguards and increase your power by this unit's power. Oh, this is useful, actually. This is a G2 that actually lets Drearion and Sinbuster hit a magic number. Actually, you can actually use this with Laurel, believe it or not, and actually hit 31k. So you would guarantee yourself, you guarantee yourself two draws with this card, actually. CB1 to pretty much guarantee yourself two draws with Sinbuster. Not bad. That's a nice G2. I like it. I wish it came sooner. So let's go over True Ultimate Dimensional Robo Great Die Kaiser. Obviously, it legions with Ultimate Great Diusha, and the effect stays during your turn if this unit is in Legion. So it's continuous. And the number of cards in your soul with Dimensional Robo is three or more, which it will be. Or they just change it to two. Uh, th this unit gets a critical. So it's a pretty much you have an MLB on the start of the game. MLB, you're ready to start. Next is CB1. When this unit drives up, reveals a grade three card, and your Legion Mate's critical is two. So in order to get that Legion Mate to two, he has to be at LB4 to get it. That was the only bad thing about Ultimate Ayusha. He has to be at LB to get the crit, but... I don't know if the Go Cannon will work in this format for Zero, but I remember people telling me back at TCG days you were able to do that because technically that is your Vanguard as well, so you can give him a crit. But the crit wouldn't get added to Ultimate Dimensional Robo Dai Kaiser, it gets added to Dayusha. So pretty much that's how it works for Legion. And if you do, choose one of your points, guards, retire it. So again, this is pretty much Dai Kaiser effect, which we know how they dealt with it. So if you break right this on top of Dai Kaiser, will the effect stack? I pray to God it does, because this just feels like Exodia Punch to the face. Especially if you hit three crits for game. <laughs> Sounds nice. Zeal actually gets a Legion as well, and this one's actually going to be tricky to translate. Keep in mind, it does Legion with Zeal, which means you keep Zeal's LB effect. So if you're at LB4, you can use the Zeal effect to decrease the power. So his effect is Catalyst 1. When a card is put into your damage zone, 
if this unit is Legion, you may pay the cost. If you do choose one of your opponent's units, and it gets minus 1,000 power for each card on your Vanguard and Rear Guard. So the max you can do is 7,000 power. So you can minus 7,000 power from your opponent. And since the CB goes in there, so think of it like doing Shirayuki. Except the damage goes there, and once the damage goes in, you CB1, because pretty much that's how it works. And when a card gets put into your damage zone, so technically, once it goes there, you can CB it, and don't take any more damage from the Vanguard of the Legion. Pretty much what they're trying to say. Interesting enough, I'll see how this translates, you know. And also, it has an effect. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if your opponent has a Vanguard with 8,000 power or less, search your Soul Charge 1, choose a card from your damage zone, and turn face up. So he actually is a Counter Charger, too. So you can minus with Zeal and Counter Charge. So you can do a Zeal effect and Counter Charge. But you have to Soul Blast. No, you Soul Charge 1. No, it's Soul Charge. So you, you're increasing Soul. And then you get a counter charge. So that's interesting. That Zeal has a really interesting, has a really interesting thing going for him, especially when he can minus on the Vanguard attack. So it's pretty much doing Shirai Yuki, and he has an effect that lets him, after doing Zeal's Limit Break Four effect, you can counter charge it, so you can do this effect again. Keep in mind this effect doesn't work once you hit up fifth damage, but once you get the fourth damage, it will work because you'll get hit the fifth, and it will work. So Glad to be Zeal, I think, can definitely get translated pretty well. And believe it or not, we are missing two types of witches still from Genesis. Witch of Aster Star. Count last one. When this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, Soul Charge 1. Soul Charge 2. And if you have a Grade 3 Vanguard Witch in his name, choose up the two of your other units and those units. Oh, nice. You can Power Creep a Call. That's good. That's actually really good. But it's a Counter Blast, so it's technically bad because it costs CB and there's no Counter Charge. But you can Power Up a Call him easy, but eh. I didn't even know there was one more Legion for Genesis Witches. So, Witch of the Pure Star Anis. Counter Blast 1. When your card with Witch and his card name is put from your soul into your drop zone, so you may pay the cost. If you do, call that card. And if this unit is Legion, draw a card. Oh, you know what? This is actually a better Witch uh, Legion. CB1. When your card with Witch and its card name is put from your soul into your drop zone, you may pay the cost. If you do, call that card to the rear. So, this could be any Witches. So, this makes... Your entire soul raven. All you have, everything's a raven with this card. Soul Blast 3, when your unit with which in its card name is placed, you during the turn of this unit legion. During the turn of this unit legion. So this is a once per turn effect of Soul Blast 3. You may pay the cost if you do counter charge one. And so oh, okay. Looks like we have a counter charger for witches that they were didn't want to release. They, this card may be a rare in G era, but in Zero's format, this is definitely a triple rare. Counter charge and soul charge. That sounds great. And you should pretty much get the soul blast three effect off, but you still counter charge and get all your plays. But you can't do this during battle phase, though. Oh, now I see the issue with this card. It, it's not a battle phase. It's just it sets up columns and that's it. Uh, it gives you like intercepts and you draw a card. Uh, I thought this was good. Never mind. But the counter charge is nice. It's a nice thought, but no battle phase witch, no wolfy likey. Sad face. All right, believe it or not, we still have more liberator stuff coming. I know more sacking liberators. That's what we need. That's what we need in this world. You know, like we need more sacking liberators. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. We did not need this at all. All right, let's get the star. So they get a new forerunner, believe it or not. Flaming Passion Liberator Guido. He's from Jersey. <laughs> but as you need your soul, if your Vanguard is Legion, look at the three cards from the top of your deck. Search up to one card with Liberator and his card name among them. Wow. So it's that unit that pretty much did what the other guy did without boosting. And it does what Zoran does, but it's a Forerunner effect. Are you serious? And get, get this, get this. It's a free freaking call by putting this into your soul. But you have to call it to an open rear guard circle. Still, free call, really? God, why do liberators get everything for free? Invitation liberator, rude. CB1, put this unit into your soul. When an attack hits a vanguard during the battle, this unit boosted. You may pay the cost. If you do, look at three cards from the top of your deck. Search up the one card from among them and call them. Put the rest at the bottom. The other good thing is this isn't creating multi-attackings because you need empty circles. The best this is doing is setting up columns, which isn't bad either. But I don't think we would risk our Balan at all. So, no. Chikal Liberator. Soul Blast Woman's unit attacks a Vanguard. 3,000 pounds. Okay, that's worthless. Um, hang on. 
We're, we'll be going over that. That came too early. <laughs> Liberator Dulcet Archer. Choose a card from your hand and discard. When another unit Liberator and card name is placed on your rear guard circle, from your deck, you pay the cost. If you do, draw a card. So now they have better draw power too? Just from the... So you get free calls. Let me get this straight. You get free calls with Star Rain. You get free draw, unlimited draw power. Pretty much with this. Good thing this effect is only once per turn. But this is technically free draws. But again, why would you waste your Liberator slots for this? You need Balan. But still, there's many... There's G1s, you can... You know what I hate? They made Liberators have a lot of fun with their units. That's the issue here. I'm having an issue because this is a fun unit to use because this gives you draw power, which means you can draw anything you need and Legion and do things and filter into PGs. It's like ridiculous. And this is every time you're calling. Like, come on. Look, come on, really? All right. Regulation Liberator Aglavail. Aglavail returns. Wow. Okay. What is unit attached if your Vanguard is a bluish faint? Okay, so it's an 11k unit. Other effects. Soul Blast 1. When this unit is placed from your deck, you may pay a cost. If you do, look at 5? So it's up for a bluish flame. Okay. And put it into your hand. Okay. Not too bad. But obviously this is looking for, you know, the Legion. Because it says look for a bluish flame. This is obviously looking for your Legion by Soul Blasting 1. So guess what? Again, building drop, searching what you need, and getting shit done. Yay, Aglavale. Myrtle Liberator. When your Vanguard legions, this unit gets 10,000 power. Worthless. Brave Stride Seeker Sharon. Sharon. I, I think this came early, too. One sec. There we go. Citation Liberator Heli. You'll see that card later. Don't worry. This is supposed to be all in order. Those pictures double save. Citation Liberator Heli. Count plus one and put this unit into your soul. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at three cards at a time. Okay, you see, this is a multi-attacker. Because he goes in the soul first. So he frees up a column so you can multi-attack. Isn't that great? Honestly, I can only be glad they don't give those units a boost or anything. Technically, you have to boost with this. You can't really do a perfect multi-attack. Unless you somehow didn't, like, if you don't, if the Vanguard wasn't that weak, but 9k it usually isn't so bad. And this is obviously early pressure. Because once the opponent's at 9k, you really have no use for this card unless you're planning to sack triggers. At best, sack triggers. Interesting enough, they do have ways to put cards in the soul, soul blast them, and keep calling cards from the deck. So we get another Bluish Flame Legion name, Prominence Glare. Let's take a look at that. Legions with Aglavale. So we already know that's going to be another rank award maybe, but I doubt it. They're going to do it again, right? But they do love gold. Effect. Count by one and choose a card waiting with Bluish Flame in your hand and discard it. So it's a Persona Blast technically. Because how many Bluish Flames are there besides the Legion stuff? I haven't really seen any Bluish Flames besides the card's name Liberators. You're saying his name is Bluish Flame Lurium. So it's pretty much a Persona Blast of a Bluish Flame card. So discard any Bluish Flame. When your unit is placed on the rear guard circle from your deck, if this unit is Legion, you may pay a cost if you do until the end of the turn. This unit gets plus one crit, and during the battle that this unit attacks, your opponent cannot call PGs. Well, obviously, this effect gets reworded to your opponent has to discard a G3 to activate a Sentinel. Also, other effect. Counter Blast 1, choose one of your rear guards, retire it, look at the top four cards from the top of your deck, Search so up the one Liberator and its card name from among them. Call it and then put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. Hooray! No, bad. Keep in mind you can do this effect uh, when your unit is placed. Uh, obviously, you have to be Legion for this. If this unit is Legion, you may pay the cost. So you have to Legion and then do that CB1 effect. And then you get the crit. The difference between this and Prominence Core, this one just gains a crit, period. That's it. CB2, gain a Glory crit. So it's technically Glory with... Getting an uh, intercept, intercept, and gaining a crit. This is glory, but with better t give, giving back, better giving back with your CV. It's amazing, really. Liberators, I mean, I wish glory had its effect in general. Imagine Aqua Force getting free intercepts like that. Nope. Not at all. So there's that. So prepare for that unit, because that's going to be fun, especially with Blaster Blade Liberator running around, and the fact that this unit needs. It doesn't matter what unit you call, you're good to go as long as you pitch a bluish flame. 
Obviously, this is more situation because you have to discard Blue Flame, which means you discard a Re Legion, but you have to just be prepared for the crit anyways. But obviously, you're not going to do this effect early. At best, you're calling units, and you're going to do this effect maybe when they're at fourth damage so you can swing and go for game. Obviously, you're not going to abuse the crit effect. No. You're going to do that effect once they're at four. Done and done. Liberator Gigantech Anchor. Oh, Gigantech keeps getting upgraded. Careless one, soul bless one. When this unit attacks, you may pay the cost if you do. 5,000 power. All right, so that's it for the rest of the Liberator stuff, if it does come. But that's supposed to be coming to us in the future. So again, like I said, we don't know how long they're going to extend Legion. Maybe this will be the last set where they just give us everything and just focus on G. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go over some more Perdition Dragon stuff. Perdition Dragon, Pedal Flare Draco Kid. Put this unit into your soul. When your Vanguard Legions... You may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your vanguards and it gets one this unit attack hits. Choose one of your post rear guards and retire it. That's lame. This is garbage. Don't run it. Keep going, Conroe. Embodiment of Perdition Majib. So plus one, when this unit is placed on the vanguard circle or rear guard, if your opponent has no rear guards in the same column as this unit, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your units and it gains power. That's really nice. Again, again, Cogros have many ways to fill drop. Perdition Wyvern or Zay Care. When this unit boosts, if, if your opponent does not have any rear guards in the same column, because a 9k booster. Eh. Perdition Dragon Knight Nasal. When this unit is placed, if your Vanguard has no rear guards, if your opponent has no rear guards in the same column as this unit, it gains 5,000, so it can hit a magic number with a 7k booster. Kind of. Uh, I guess it's like. Eh. Alright, Perdition Dragon Knight Terra Vive. When your opponent rear guard in the same column as this unit is put into the drop zone, if your Vanguard is Legion. Gain 5,000 power. So again, another magic number if you kill with Perdition Dragon, but it has to be in the same column as Perdition Dragonite, so he gets 14k. But um, keep in mind, as we saw how they worked with Perdition Dragons in general, in Game Studio a lot, they have to be in the same column anyways to retire, so this guy gaining 14k is less likely not happening unless a G1 says retire a unit. So there's that. It's not happening. No one's going to run that. Perdition Dragon, Dragonic Neofame. When this when this unit is placed on the rearguard circle, and this card gets Counterblast 1. When you're put rear rearguard in the same column as this unit is put into the drop zone, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one another. So pretty much he kills an entire column if you do a Perdition or Berserk Dragon play, pretty much. I don't, I mean, Game Studios legit kind of nerf with Perdition. Not really nerf, but I mean, most of these effects don't work unless you retire something. I'm guessing when you use Dragon Newt, uh, when you deal that damage, <coughs> you'll be able to get the 14,000 power <coughs> in swing for game. But I um, I guess that's what they were kind of going for, but weird. Embodiment of Perdition Sahar. So last one, when this unit is placed on the Vanguard Rearguard Circle, if your opponent doesn't have any rear guards, again, again with like, if your board is clear, give yourself power. And give that unit 4,000 power. That's like nothing. Perdition Berserker Manasa. When your Vanguard Legions, this unit gets 10,000 power. Garbage. No one's running you. Alright, Dragonic Overlord VX. Supposed to come in G era, but I'm expecting it. Legions with the end. So you know what that means. The end's a Vanguard, which means if you try the end, you get two. That's right. Restand your Vanguard. Also, effect. When this unit Legions. So when this unit, so it's a once per turn effect. Search your deck for up to one card the same card name as your unit on your Vanguard Circle. So pretty much it just guarantees the Persona Blast. No wonder this is once per turn when you do this. Search your deck for one card name as the same card in your Vanguard Circle. Reveal it to your opponent. Put it to your hand. Shovel your deck. Obviously that's what they were going for. Careless one and choose a Dragon. Overlord the X from your hand and discard it. At the end of the battle, this unit attack. If the attack did not during that battle, you may pay cost if you choose up to two of your punch rear guards and retire them. That's pointless. Pointless. The second effect has like no value. All we're doing is killing boosters. People are running 12Ks these days. Yeah, obviously the first effect's the only good effect. I mean, it's nice. It looks good on paper, but um, if your attack didn't hit, retire two units. I mean, okay. Then what? Pretty sure I cleaned up the entire board with the amount of retiring I was doing. I don't think there's going to be anything left. Just saying. Just, just throwing it out there. There's nothing left. Perdition Dragon, Claws, Vile Dragon. Mm, uses the Nasal. Counterblast 1. When this unit drive check reveals a card, so it's a Persona drive check. And if this unit is Legion, 
You may pay a if you choose all your post rear guards or retire all your post rear guards in the same column. Um, that's like one of the worst, technically terrible. I guess this is how you, I guess, boost your units without boosters and triggers. But I guess. I mean, I guess the X was the only good thing. Let's see. Breakdown Dragon. Tradition Dragon Breakdown. He looks cool. Power Blast 3, if this unit is Legion, so it's continuous. Choose one of your post rear guards and retire all of your post rear guards in the same column. So CV3 to retire an entire column. Then if the number of rear guards your opponent has is two or less, choose a card from your damage zone and turn face up. So you see, so you counter charge one. I spent CV3 and I have to counter charge one if I cleared up a board like that. Yeah, nothing. Tradition Emperor Dragon, Dragonic Overlord the Great. Okay. You had me at a low here. Okay. Let's see what you do. Dragonic Neo Flame. Okay. CB1 and choose two cards from your hand and discard them. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a rear guard. Really? Really? A rear guard? You, you gotta be kidding me here. Attacks a rear guard. If this unit is Legion, so continuous, you may pay the cost if you do stand all of your vanguards. I mean, the only positive I see in this, it does kill an intercept, which means you can give you two attacks on Vanguard. So keep that in mind. Uh, choose one of your rear guards with the same name as your unit on your Vanguard circle and retire. When this unit attack hits, you may pay the cost. So you want me to Persona Retire to retire my opponent's back row? Tell me this is when this unit attack hits. Okay, thank gosh. Just when this unit attack hits, we're good. So you can clean up the board. So you can Persona Retire... To clean up the board, so I guess that's how you're going to get your freaking other guy who turns into a 50k, Teraviv, to hit 14k. I guess that's the whole point why you're running Teraviv. Because, think about it, Teraviv becomes 14k, you don't need a booster, you just have the Persona retire to retire the second intercept, so that gives you three attacks on Vanguard, and you can win. Okay, I see what you did there. Still lame, you got to attack a rear, pitch two, it is what it is. Tradition Dancer, Eulalia. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, gains 5,000. We're done talking about that. So, yeah, weirdly enough, there's nothing really more for... I think Dragon is still the strongest of the Legion. But I guess the the Great here isn't so bad. Overlord the Great isn't too bad. And the X obviously is a free restand. But you still have to pay CB2 to restand. So you need CB. So, yeah. Just, just that. Okay. Believe it or not, there's still some Link Joker cards that we still haven't gone over, so we're going to go over those too. Like I said, this is everything we haven't done, because after this video, we talked about every single card in the Vanguard TCG up to Legion, so you guys can enjoy the rest of your days till G-Era for discussions. Anyways, Star Vader, Brave Fang. Put this unit into your soul. When an attack hits a Vanguard during the battle, this unit boosted, and if your Vanguard is you pay, pay the cost if you do choose two of your opponent's lock cards, and they become Omega Locked. Not bad. So this could always work with other cards, because again, this is an Omega Lock effect. So obviously this is going to be a CV1 to Omega Lock. So again, you keep cards locked, so on and so forth. Keep the front row Omega Lock, so they lose two turns of having units. So that's nice. You have a forerunner that can do it. Cool. Star Vader Archfox. Uh, Soul Blast 1. When it's unit boost of Vanguard, and they pay the cost. If you do, boost uh, Soul Blast 1, and then it becomes a 7k booster. Oh, okay, cool. But it has to boost Vanguard. And obviously, we're going to go over the leaders too, guys. Leader, Forerunner, and Knight. Counter Blast 1, put this unit into your soul. Look at the top five cards from your deck. Set to one green, green. Really? This is our G3 searcher? What the fuck? Okay. Infestational Starvator Moran. Mayaron. Rest this unit if your Vanguard is Legion. Choose a unit named Starvator Blaster Joker, and it gets 10,000 power. Does he really need more power? 31k beat stick means nothing zero if you have to attack a Neme. Anyways, they get a... Oh, the leaders get their own set. No, I'm pretty sure that will come. I think. Star Vader, turn down Dragon. When this unit is placed on the Guardian Circle with the number of lock cards in your opponent's turn, they're not making that. Looting the leader, Gutnik. Soul Blast 2. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, pay the cost. Oh, look. They got a Soul Blast 2 draw card. Great for Legion. <laughs> Great for Legion. Anyway, Star Vader, Grand Baboom. Soul Blast 1. When this unit attacks, you may pay the cost. Get 3,000 power. Okay. And they have a lot of Soul Blast units in, like, in this, like, set, in the next couple sets for some reason. Juxtapose the leader, Jaleli. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, if your opponent Vanguard is, if your opponent Vanguard is deleted, 
Choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and lock it. Okay, cool. So your vanguard is at zero power and you lost an intercept. How do you feel? Obviously, this is a little bit more trickier to play because you have to delete the vanguard first before you play this. So it's almost... Obviously, this is going to get nerfed to high health to CB2. Let's be real. Starvader Astro Reaper. Soul Blast 1. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at the far to the top of your deck. Search for up to one card in the same card name as a unit on your vanguard circle from among them. Reveal it to your opponent and then shuffle your deck. Obviously, this probably comes with a Persona Blast. There's a reason for this. Pretty sure that's the case. And again, look, more Soul Blasting. So again, lots and lots of Soul Blast. Starvader Short Sniper. When this unit attacks a vanguard, if your vanguard is Legion and your opponent has a locked card, Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So it's just snipe. It's instead of snipe, instead of sniper, it's just called sword viper. But he's 9k. Yay. Bullet Mark Star Vader, Reninium. Uh, when your Vanguard Legions, this unit gets 10,000 power. 18. Star Vader Silence Dilation. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, if your Vanguard is Legion, the number of lock cards he has is two or more. So you have to deck for up to this one Star Vader Blaster Joker. Okay, and put it to your hand, shuffle your deck. So a free search. By just having your opponent have two locked cards, so I'm guessing you're doing the Legion first before playing this, to search out Blaster Joker for re-Legioning. So technically this card isn't bad, because technically this lets you get another unit to your hand, so you have something to use next turn for re-Legioning. And as you can tell, we're probably going over Blaster Joker tip. Greed the Leader Jail. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose a card from your damage zone. Honestly, this is going to be used in every other Link Joker deck. It's a fucking Counter Charger. Are you kidding? Why would you not run this in any... This is going to be run in every Link Joker deck. Counter charge, back up, do everything. God, this seems like this benefits Glendios more than the average bear. Peeling the leader, Progue. When your opponent Vanguard is deleted, this unit gets 10... Just 2,000. Just a one. Okay. So here is the deleter Legion. Zaleli. Counter blast 2 and choose a card from your hand and discard it. When this unit, Legion. So when you Legion, you may pay the cost if you do delete all of your opponent's vanguards. This delete unit is turned face down. Power becomes 0. And it loses all its text. It turns face up at the end of the owner's turn. So it stays at 0 power. Isn't that great? So it's like you lock the vanguard. And he only has 0 power. Isn't that great? Believers, it would be great in Zero's format. I can't, can't unlock a vanguard. <laughs> You can run. I think you can run on top of it. No, choose two. You cover. So it says turn face down. The power comes here and loses all text. It turns face up at the end of the owner's turn. Couldn't you ride on top of it? I don't know if you could, because it's technically locked. I'm pretty sure you, you can ride on top. I think someone will say it in the premiere. Like, no, you can't ride on top of it. But if they can't ride on top of it, this card's gonna be really fucking stupid. I'll tell you that much. CB two and discard a card just to delete the Vanguard for a turn. Uh, okay. Cool. I'll take it. Star Vader Blaster Joker. There's the menace. There he is. Alrighty. Let's see what we're dealing with. He legions with Photon, so you already know that's a thing. Counter Blast 2. Soul Blast 2. Again with the Soul Blasting. Counter Blast 2. Soul Blast 2. Shoot one of your rear guards with Star Vader and its card name and lock it. If, that, if this unit is legion, lock all of your opponent's rear guards. Choose one of your opponent's legion mates and retire it. So again, your opponent has to re-Legion. This is good against the Thing Saver matchup too, because if you kill Blaster Blade Seeker, they're not legion with it, so they have to re-ride Thing Saver unless they just have a Wingle and another Thing Saver, so on and so forth. Sounds good, but it sounds weird on paper too. Choose a card with the same card as you unit in your Vanguard Circle and from your hand, put it into your soul. So you have a way to put cards in your soul, but it's a Persona Soul. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets a critical. Okay, cool. But nothing there is from, from this effect where he legit locks everything. Can I last two? So last two. Choose one of your rear guards with Star Vader. Lock it. And if this unit is Legion, lock all of your opponent's rear guards. Your opponent loses all his rear guards. This is a freaking lock everything for a CB2 and a Soul Blast 2. So definitely want the Soul up on this card. Actually, I need to see something real quick. Just curious. Curiosity. Okay, so it's, I always thought that said choose up the lock, choose up the lock card, choose how many lock cards that are locked and keep them locked. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't want to break them, but I almost was about to. Thank God that's not a thing. But locking all five cards is a thing, so that is good. Solid. So, Starter Blaster Joker, lock everything. 
Persona Soul to gain a crit. CB2 to Soul Blast 2 to lock everything. Pretty much you retired an entire field in that fashion sense. So this card's more of a threat than the average bear. I'll tell you that much. Locking a Star Vader is so freaking easy, so I wouldn't worry about it. And retire it. It's so good. So good. And let's not forget Star Vader Dark Zodiac. This is where you, this is what Astral Reaper's all about. CB1, when this unit Legion, so it's once per turn, you may pay the cost you do. All your opponent's lock cards cannot be unlocked during his or her next. So Omega lock it for a turn, and we know how that worked with Glendios. Next, choose one card with the same card as this unit in your Vanguard Strike from your hand. Discard Persona Blast. Choose a rear guard in your opponent's front row and back row. Lock them. And then you can see B1. So you pretty much do that effect, and then you lock those cards for two turns. I mean, re-ride, do it again. Ride Glendios for game. I'm kidding. It's not going to work. <laughs> Star Vader, Venom Dancer. Let's see. Another triple rare. Interesting. Count plus one. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked the Vanguard. If this unit is Legion, so it's forever, you may pay the cost. If you do, for each of your opponent's lock card, choose one to one of your rear. Nani! They get a multi attacker? Hold up. That's sexy. That is very, very sexy. They get a multi attacker, Legion. Holy crap. Count plus one. And at the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard. If the unit is Legion. Pay the cost for each of your puts lock cards. Let me guess. Choose one card with Star Vader's card name. Count plus one. Obviously, it's going to be CB1. If you have another unit in your middle column, choose one of your puts rear guards in the back row and lock it. So lock two for CB2, then CB3 to stand three cards for an entire column if necessary. But you're only going to need to lock one to restand once if you don't want to really do that much pushing. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, keep in mind, Sniper can lock something. So you can restand almost for free. You can do a CB1, attack once, attack with a Sniper, restand. It's beautiful. I love it. Sniper just became a whole lot more sexier with that Legion. Star Raider, Rail Star Dragon, CB1, Soul Blast, 5,000. Diverging Deleter, Newark. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose one of your units, and that unit gets 3,000. Weak. Howling Deleter, Fruit, CB1. When this unit attacks, wow, only the Legion mattered. Once you attack the Vanguard, the battle opponent is 12,000 grade. This unit gains... Oh, wow. Terrible. Wow. A lot of that rest... The, the Legion Deleter is godly. The rest was hot garbage. And the G2 Deleter is awesome because all you have to do is Legion, and you pretty much knock out an Intercept and swing at the Vanguard twice. You're pretty much swinging at a VP Farmer with that. So Mega Colony, as you can tell, is the last clan event coming to zero from the looks of it. So that means one more set, one more... That means Mega Colony and Grand Blue will be bundled together to finish off all the clans. Since Mega Colony barely has any cards, they only have these four. Machine Horn MK2. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, if your Vanguard is Legion, choose your opponent's rear guard and paralyze it. So it's like Poppyo, but it's a 9k Poppyo. Machine Mosquito MK2. During your turn, if you have a Vanguard with Machina in its card name, all your opponent's Vanguards and rear guards are at rest. This unit, during your turn, if you have a Vanguard Machina in its card name, and all of your opponent's units are at rest, you gain this effect. When this unit attacks or hits a Vanguard, choose one of your other rear guards and stand it. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards that unit cannot stand. So keep it paralyzed if your opponent did boost, resting, all that. So to pull off this effect, your opponent legit has to boost with all of his columns at rest. And then you can pull this effect off and it looks like gorgeous restand capability. So technically, Mega Colony gets a restander, well, a multi-attack, believe it or not. And it's not that hard to pull off if you rest everything. So hopefully there is a card that benefits it. Machine Scorpion, MK2. Count of us one, choose a card from your name with the same name, so it's a Persona Blast. If this unit is Legion, choose up the three cards with the machine it's card name from your soul. Call them the seven rear guards at rest. Increase this unit's power by that power. So he does a stag play for a CB1 Persona Blast. <coughs> I'm guessing the soul has a bunch of G2s then, hopefully. Well, B became more viable there, I'll tell you that much. That at least gives you another attack. Uh, other effect, choose one of your rear guards with a Sheena's card name and put it into your soul. Again, there you go, putting cards in the soul. Choose one of your rear guards and stand it. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and that unit can't stand it. So there's a way to paralyze. So if they, in case they did have one booster that didn't boost or they did have a unit that's standing, there is a way to do the effect. So this card's not going to translate too bad to zero, actually. Yes, it's technically stag, but the, it's a bad stag because you actually have to Persona Blast with the G2 or G3 in your hand. That's the only bad part. But the fact that you can restand the unit by putting a card back into your soul is also good because you can lock an opponent. And if you play the G2, that lets you restand since all the units are at rest. That's going to benefit you at the end of the day. Last but not least, Machining Tarantula MK2. 
Here you go. This is the other Legion CV1. When this unit drive check reveals a card with the same card name. So again, only five cards possibly in the deck that can do this. So it's a persona check. If this unit is Legion, so it's continuous, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose all of your opponent's rear guards, and those units cannot stand during your opponent's next stand. So the point of this, it's a cycle in the tooth persona blast, persona drive. Tricky, but with the how RNG works when you Legion, you might trigger this card more than you think. Also, it says Soul Blast 2 with Machine in this card name. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and that unit cannot stand. So again, Soul Blast, and he Soul Blast 2 to paralyze. So this card, again, not going to translate so because of drive checking and persona. Persona checking is always tricky, but again, it's gambling for a free Sigma Tooth play. Keep that in mind. Oh, just paralyzes the Vanguard. So again, your opponent would have to just... I thought it was the entire field. You have, if you choose all of your opponent's Vanguards... Okay, so it's not... So, I don't know. I feel like you can do Sickle and do the same shit, but... No one's really going to use this for a Persona unless they change this effect. Maybe make it like Sickle. I don't know if I can afford a Persona thing with this at all. I mean, change this to an effect like Sickle, we got ourselves a game. That much I can say. Alright, believe it or not, Murakumo is dropping. So here are the units so you get a little bit better understanding. Stabro Kuzunoa. Soul Blast 1. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, if your Vanguard is Legion, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your rear guards that's not named South Road. Search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit. Call it to a rear guard. Shuffle your deck. And at the end of the turn, put that unit with this effect on the bottom of your deck. So I would say they want you to use the Monkey G3 so you can get extra draw power from your Soul Blasting. And you have a lot more attack prep with this. So that's what they want you to do. And this effect only works when you Legion. But again, you have to make a copy. It's like Ouroboros card, but without wasting CB. Interesting enough. But the cards don't have to be called from the deck. Unless they actually... I think it's either... I don't know. I think in the video, I don't know if the video showed it was calling from outside the deck, but I think the reveal for this card might be tomorrow because we are going to go over one more thing at the end of this video. All right. Convert to Mon Dragon, Magu, Getsu, Typhoon. Obviously, this did not come, believe it or not. I looked at the list. It didn't look like it was there. And what it did was it merged with Magu, Getsu. So when this unit Legion, so it's once returned, choose it to fire your rear guards with Magu's in his card name, and they get 5,000 power and boost. So now you can give your G2 that proper prep time. Also, once per turn, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Search your deck to one card with the same name as you know your Vanguard. Call it to a rear guard circle. Stop to your deck. And then at the end of the turn, I mean, obviously I would assume this would be just be call outside. And this is how you add Mob Getsu to your hand. And then obviously the Mob Getsu's Vanguard effect works with this. So technically you can do a Persona Blast to get extra attacks in. Surprisingly, this didn't come for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's there. Maybe I'm not seeing it, but we'll take a look at it at the end at the end here. I'll look at the picture one last time. So this is what's coming. Semi is the Legion coming out. So what it does is you see me one. If this unit is Legion, so let's continue. Choose a unit on your Vanguard circle. Choose your deck for the two cards with the same name as the Vanguard. Put those units called with this effect on the bottom deck in anywhere. You call them, and that's that. So what they did was they actually buffed him. This is a huge buff. He let those units actually attack from back row, both of them. So this was a giant buff to Semi to make Murakumo at least a bit deadly to play. And I appreciate that. So Semi got a nice buff and he deserved it. I'm glad Murakumo is going to be more aggressive in the future for us. All right, Narukami cards. A couple cards that were left. When this unit is placed in the rear guard circle, if your vanguard is Legion, choose up the two of your opponent's rear guards and they lose intercept. So it's like a, a desert sniper that kills everything. Believe it or not, Dragon Kaiser actually, Dragon Kaiser Vermillion actually gets a Legion mate, and his name is Crimson. And what he does is, once per turn, Limit Break 4, the ability can activate 4 more. Choose one of your Legion mates act abilities until the end of the turn. That ability loses its cost until the next time it's played. If act has no cost, the cost is paid when declaring that you are playing it. <laughs> so, last one. So, pretty much what this card is, it's a Limit Break 4 effect. And this ability active if you have four or more damage. So this is a limit break four unit for some reason. Choose one of your Legion mates, act until, and that ability loses its cost until the next time it's, it is played. So he's a very interesting unit because he just does Kaiser effects for free. But you need Kaiser to do it. So I don't know if this is like a weird wording, but it says once return, it's a limit break four. So obviously when he's at limit break four, he can use Draconic Kaiser's effect without wasting CB. 
So I guess you could use your CV for other things, maybe clearing up boards with Dead Scythe or clearing up just clearing up the board in general. Okay, that's what it's trying to say. Okay, got it. So pretty much he just copies Dragon and Kaiser Vermilion's effects. That's about it. But it's free. Pretty much there were two more Neo Nectar cards that didn't come in there for the Maiden. It's kind of less one with Maiden of in its card name and choose a card from your hand, discard it. At the end of that, this unit boosted a rear guard with Maiden in its card name. If you have a face up card in your G zone or your Vanguard is Legion, you may pay the cost. Obviously, we'll be seeing that in Legion. And I think we're going to see this in Legion as well. So make sure you have your Maiden of Trail Roses ready for this. Choose a card from your hand, discard it when this unit Legion, so it's a one new Legion. You may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to two cards with the same card name as the unit on your Vanguard Circle. So two of those. Uh, really? Reveal interior phone, choose a card from your Oh, wait. Wait, hold up. I think this lets you Persona Blast easier. Because it says, if you do, search your deck for up to two cards with the same card name as a unit on your Vanguard Circle. Reveal them to your opponent. Choose a card from among them, put it into your hand, and then call the rest. So you put one Persona Blast into your hand, and you call the other one to the field. So you have a chance to make multi-attacks. So that's two. When this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your grade one or less rear guards. Search your head deck for up to one card with the same name, card name as that unit. And then, okay, so you just, if you have a G1, you can call no, another one with the same name. Eh, I can see why it didn't get made. Apparently, Nova Grapplers had two more cards they didn't drop. Count bus one, screw the riser name. If you have two or more cards with riser and its original card name on your Vanguard Circle, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, and when this unit attacks a Vanguard, choose up to one of your other rear guards and stand it. So you have a chance to perform, that's right, a multi-attack. If it's only one intercept, you perform a multi-attack and smack with that Ultimate Riser crit to the face. But apparently Ultimate Riser Glory Hand is something I didn't expect. When your other unit with Riser card name stands, it would affect from one of your cards. If this unit is Legion, this the unit that stand gets 5,000, so you increase the power more. So you get a little bit more juice, so you pretty much power creep the combo, but it's not like something... Uh, big that would change the game All right guys, we have more seeker stuff coming so be prepared for this seekers aren't out and about yet But let's go over this So we have rousing seeker air mile when this unit is placed on the rear guard circle If you have a name unit name blast away seeker on your vanguard circle They pay the cost if you do this unit gets plus a thousand power for each other seeker In his card name until the end of the turn. So again that works with legion as well So it becomes a big booster Jewel Knight Sword Me, Counter Blast 1 with Jewel Knight in his card name. Obviously, you're going to Counter Blast 1. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to one grade 1 Jewel Knight. Call it sweet. So once we place this, we can now we can replace our Sybils with this. We're good to go. Brave Stride Seeker Charon, Counter Blast 1. When this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, if your Vanguard is Legion, you may pay the cost. If you do, no one's going to give you 4,000 power. Seeker Light Blaze Dragon. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if your Vanguard is a Seeker... Choose one of your other units, and that unit gets 5,000 power. That's good for power creeping columns, too, just in case, by the way. Interesting enough. Energy, Energy Seeker Madden. CB1, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have Blaster Base Seeker, obviously you will. But it has to attack Vanguard. Even Pagos is easier, this unit gets plus 1,000 power. So you can increase his power, and then he gains like 6,000 more power from all the Seekers. Your board is full and shit. So you can get an extra 7k power to this, so it becomes 16k, so you hit a magic number regardless. Agreement Seeker Menopress, CB1. When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, pay the cost. If you do, look at the five cards of your deck, search it to the grade 3. Oh, so a G3 searcher. Light Source Seeker Alfred Exfic. This is going to be pretty much the last couple legions for Seekers here. So he can legion with Blaster Blade, and he can legion with Blaster Blade Seeker. But... Keep in mind, if you Legion with Blaster Blade, you can use Blaster Blade's effect because you're placing it on the Vanguard Circle. Because Va Blaster Blade is actually a Vanguard Rear Guard effect. So you can use Blaster Blade too. So it also has an effect during the turn. If this card is Legion, this card gets 1,000 power for each of your other units with Seeker in its card name. Then if the number of seat Rear Guards you have is 5 or greater, this unit gets a crit for having a full board. Catalyst 2 with Seeker, I was just CB2, search your deck for one card with Seeker, and then call it. So you can search out any Seeker you want for a CB2, you can lead you with Blaster Blade Seeker if you want to, or Blaster Blade, deck thinning is deck winning, get your intercepts, and then you have a unit that's legit a crit pressure. Fast crit, thing saver for game. So obviously you would lead into Seeker, swing with this, push them to 5, ride the thing saver, go for game. So this card really just pushes the Seekers to their final power, their final limits. 
Prevail Jewel Knight Ivan. Ivani. The only sad part is you can, this is a Jewel Knight Legion, but in order to use Mer you can't even use Miranda without Ashley though. And I think we're done with uh, Miranda when we go uh, the route of Uvane, I think. Let's see what Uvane does. Let's see if we're ditching the whole Jewel Knight tech. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if this unit is Legion, the number of units you have in Jewel Knight in its card name is six or more. Wow, six or more? So that counts his Legion mate. And then he gains a plus 5,000 power and a critical, and he goes up to um, 2,800 pretty much. Well, no, 2,700. So pretty much, uh, yeah. Sadly, you gotta ditch the Miranda for this card if you're gonna run the, a Legion like this. Because you can't use Miranda unless you're using Ashley, and I don't know if we're really running Ashley anymore. Since if you want to make a deck around Prevail and return all your heals like Gantz a lot, so you probably run like more Legion stuff with Jewel Knights. You make pretty much a Jewel Knight variant of Legion with this card. And that's what they want you to do. Secret Purgatory Dragon. Pur Purgation Breath Dragon. CB2. If this unit is Legion, search your deck for up to one card with Secret's card name, call it to a rear guard circle, stuff your deck. Then if the number of units you have is more than your opponent's, choose cover and jam and turn face up. So CB2, and if you have more cards than your opponent, you counter charge one, so it was a CB1 to call anything. This ability cannot be used for the rest of their turn. Once you attack the Vanguard, gain 3,000. So again, CB2 to call a unit, and if you have more units, you, gain, you counter charge one, so it was only a CB. And it says if this unit is Legion, so technically you have an Ezel on the board with this. Seeker Lightsaver Dragon. CB2. If this unit is Legion, so continuous, choose three of your units, and those units get 5,000 power until the end of the turn. Also has another effect. Choose a card from your hand and discard. When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, you may pay a card. If you do, search the deck for one card with Seeker in its card name and call it. So, again, you're pitching a card to perform a multi-attack. This isn't a Persona Blast. This is a multi-attack, and you're boosting up columns when you swing with this. So that's actually pretty good. You can boost the column so you hit a magic number no matter what. So this is an actually interesting legion for you guys that can boost up columns and you can get away with murder in most of your attacks. King of Knights Vanguard Azal. Wow, you actually merged with Alfred? And keep in mind, if you merge with the King of Knights, if you merge with King of Knights Alfred, you get that effect as well, guys. So don't forget. Keep in mind those G3 effects are still active once he's on Vanguard. So Blast 2 and choose a card from your hand with the same name as a unit on your Vanguard circle and discard. So Persona Blast. If this unit is Legion, search your if this unit is Legion, search your deck for up to one grade two, grade one, and grade zero. Obviously, it's just be grade two and grade one. Call them and shovel your deck. If this unit Legion, your units cannot boost this unit. So it's like But keep in mind he's already getting boosted because that's right, Alfred's already given him the 5k boost from all the units on the board. Don't forget that. There's a reason why he says that. And the last but not least is the Grade 4 Harmonics Messiah that could be run in any deck from the movie. 16k beat stick. I don't think this is going to come, but it was a nice it was a nice thought. So that's actually all the cards that are left for Legion. Hopefully we know by next week what's to come so you guys are prepared. And we'll see if they extend the set any further. Anyways, now let's go over today's cards reveals. This is what we're going over next. To my friend Ali. So right here, so now we got the Legion effects of most of these cards. Let me just look here. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to see. Nope, they didn't add that Magu card for some reason. That Magu card was not added for some odd reason. And I'm looking one more time here. Yeah, they did not add Magu. So I'm glad we did this video because we had a look at what we had a look at, you know? Give me one sec. We're going back to landscape here to finish up this video. Because we, we always go over cards in landscape when it comes to zero. So anyways, we have Silver Blaze. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if, this, if your unit is Legion, Soul Blast 1 and gain 10,000 power. So 19k beat stick. Huge, I don't need a booster magic number unit. That's nice. That's really nice. I like it. My favorite units are always the ones that don't need triggers. Always. Bloody Ogle. During the turn, this unit, Legion. So this is a once per turn effect. Just like Bad End Dragger, this will also be once per turn. When your rear guard attacks, that unit gets 5,000 power until the end of battle. Put it at the bottom of your deck at the end of that battle. 
Okay, got it. When this unit attacks a vanguard, CV2. Put a card from your hand into your soul to call any card from your deck. And keep in mind that unit gets 5,000 power when you call it. And with every unit you have, this card will go up to 24,000 and hit up 31,000 power. And you'll be hitting over magic numbers like no tomorrow. Obviously, you want to use this Vata and Dragger to increase your odds of doing bloody Blue Ogle plants, which we're about to show you. And pretty much what they're trying to say is Blue Ogle. During the turn, your unit legions. So he's limited on when you legion. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a vanguard, but you'll be able to call this because of bl Bloody Ogle. Count us one and put this unit into your soul to call any card other than Frozen Ogle from your deck to an open rear guard circle. So they nerfed it. You can't call multiple Blue Ogles. So obviously they want you to call Devil Summoner to perform multi-attacks. Or you call Emerald Blaze to do that for you. There's a reason why Emerald Blaze, they want you to invest in Emerald Blaze. Because they want you to do the Blue Ogle combo by calling two Blue Ogles, then doing things. And actually, you can really profit off the bad end dragon with this. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you call those Blue Ogles, you can call out one Blue Ogle out. Call a different unit. Attack with that unit. Attack with the other Blue Ogle. Call a Devil Summoner. Call, use Devil Summoner to call another card. And guaranteed you're going to win that match because that is a lot of attacking. That is one. There's one. That's two. Vanguard. Blue Ogle. Blue Ogle. Devil Summoner. Whatever he calls. That's seven attacks on Vanguard. Seven. If you play it right. They want you to break Red Emerald Blaze for sure. No doubts. They really want you to invest in the break right on that. But obviously my only issue with this is it's a Persona Blast to perform the combo properly. It's the only issue. Especially it's CB2 to pull a card and then do all that. So you need the CB3. You need about CB4 to perform this combo correctly. Because you got to return the two blue ogles. So with that being said, freaking yikes. Uh, would I run Stun Gun? The J Dumbo, the elephant. Honestly, maybe. Because again, if you counter charge with just one blue ogle, you can at least pull off Stun Gun and actually save yourself. I mean, that's what my thing is when it comes to that, uh, believe it or not. But they nerf Blue Ogle to the extent they want you to use Animal Blaze to Persona Blast, call two Blue Ogles instead. Or you use Bloody Ogle and just do it once, something around those lines. But obviously, if you use Bloody Ogle, you can use Devil Summoner, and Devil Summoner can call you an extra unit that can gain the 5,000 power. And whatever unit that is, it will work out for you. As long as you can hit the magic numbers, obviously, and perform multi-attacks. Obviously, you leave yourself wide open. But it just depends. Could you do fast? Can you do? But well, can't you just do faster rush plays with this? I mean, technically, yeah, you could. I mean, you can just ride Bloody Ogle, Legion, get ready to call cards. But keep in mind, you got to draw cards. So actually, believe it or not, I think Zachary returns uh, for this uh, unit because Zachary says Soul Blast one draw a card. So again, keep your hand steady. CB two, put a card back in the soul. You have you have cards you can prep. Keep in mind, Zachary goes up to 14k, so you technically don't lose a booster since you are attacking with him on the Vanguard if his intercept game isn't too donks. You can use Zachary to draw your cards as well. So technically, there's a lot of ways you can play this deck. Um, but Break Right seems like the big bang blowout, but you have to use the Persona Blast unit to actually get the big bang blowout of the Blue Ogle combo. Or you can just do Bloody Ogle naturally, er, naturally early if you want to do naturally early plays with him. Uh, you can do that as well. Keep in mind, it does give the units 5,000. So that unit that gains uh, when you're legions, um, that's already at like 26 with just a 7k booster in the back. Or 24k without a booster, etc. Um, another thing, uh, Blue Ogle uh, does not power creep. So he'll only be at 20k. So that's actually, well, Bloody Ogle will only be at 20k. So that's not so good. So you wouldn't need a booster in the back of Bloody Ogle. Keep in mind, uh, you will be able to recycle Mecha Coach. So if you can draw Mecha Coach, you have ways to recycle PGs. So that's also a good thing about um, Spike Brothers in general. You'll be able to recycle uh, PGs. But uh, honestly, every time I get Bloody Ogle, he only has this effect for once per turn. So it's when you Legion. So this is all or nothing. Or you can do this all or nothing early and just really push like a couple damage hits since those units are getting 5,000 power anyways. So there's that. Not bad, though. I mean, Blue we, was to be expected that he would, you know, get some type of nerf treatment. But this was okay. This wasn't too bad. 
Um, but yeah, Spice is still good. I mean, these are still good units at the end of the day. Blue Oak can still perform stuff with Devil Summoner. Devil Summoner will just go up to 12k, which is still enough. As long as you have a 7k booster in the back, you're good to go. I mean, it's still good. I mean, you just it just depends where you're at on the Legion step. Because what's really, what makes Blue Ogle good is the fact that he gains power so he can keep the booster from leaving his spot. So you don't rest your booster. So again, another little positive there. So that's what I'm hoping for at the end of the day. All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching this big, long video. Y'all be good. Y'all stay safe, and I'll see you all another time, homies. Peace out.